Right, third part of this series on double-sided circuit boards. And what we're going to do today is go through the process of making a double-sided circuit board at home from start to finish. And it starts with just getting a large bit of copper-coated FR4 like this. But since we want to have it at a specific size, for example, for use in the Z80 computer, where they have to have this format. I mean, they could be a little longer, but they have to have this format. Um, first thing we need to do is cut this to size. And what I already, already did is put some markings on here where I want to cut this. And I'm going to cut along these lines here and this line here. And these center marks here are where I'm going to punch and then drill a hole for putting it in the spin coater later in the second step. So what I use for cutting these is just a standard tile cutter. You'd use these for cutting your bathroom tiles and everything. These work really good on FR4. Um, the only thing I'd recommend is if you buy one of these, it's very likely it would come with a very thick tile cutting blade. And I'd recommend you, you buy one of these. This is also a diamond blade, but it's um, a lot thinner. This is three millimeters and this is, I think, 1.8. Um, because, well, tiles are... Um, the, the cuts you do on tiles are, I think, a lot rougher than what you do on, on FR4. So a uh, um, smaller blade is nice. Also, um, I'd recommend putting some... Usually these tile cutters are designed for wet cutting. That's why there's all the um, watermarks on here. Um, I'd recommend you fill this up with water. And then you just cut your circuit boards. And I'll do this off camera because it's really, really loud and doesn't really add much to the video. Here we are with the big sheets of FR4 cut into appropriate pieces. These are some offcuts that I'll save for another project. And next step is to punch all of these centers here. You just I use this cheap automatic center punch from China. And what you do is just Align this and then press down. One thing about this um, spin coating process is you will always end up with circuit boards that have a hole in the middle where you spin coated them. Um, this might um, annoy some people, but I find it relatively easy to just um, leave a bit of um, space in the middle of my designs. And there is a convenient 5.5 millimeter hole there that you could use for a mounting hole. So you could have a mounting hole here and then, I don't know, two, two here where you put your screws through for mounting or your stand-ups or whatever. So I don't find this is um, much of an issue at all. So the next thing I'll do is I'll drill out these um, holes here and then we'll get to spin coating. Here we are with a whole stack of circuit board blanks with a hole in the middle. All of these are drilled out. And I also cleaned them off with some acetone so um, the pen marks aren't on there. Because these could actually act as an etching resist. So you would get two copper lines here if you don't clean them off. Um, so I did that. Also we don't want all that much water on these. Although I'm going to clean them again. As you can see, this has some FR4 still stuck to the bat. Um, next step here is spin coating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the spin coater. 
and then we're going to coat these boards. Right, here we are at the spin coater. Next step is to mount this piece of circuit board material on here. As you can see, the light is much dimmer because I shut off most of the lighting I have here because everything we're going to do after this step will be somewhat sensitive to light. Although it's really not that bad. I had one of these blanks um, pre-coated in photoresist on my bench here for about a week and it was just fine after that. You could still use it. So the next step is to apply some of this photoresist to one of these sides. Then to put a lid on it and just to spin it up. And as you can see, this wasn't quite enough. So what I do then is just put a little more first resist here around the edges. This process is really not that sensitive to uniform thickness of the first resist. Um, it's pretty forgiving. So we don't have to clean it off and start over from um, scratch. You can just coat it again. As you can hear and see, this piece of blank, I drilled a little bit off center, so it vibrates a lot. Okay, here we've got one side coated, so what I'll do now is I'll take this bit off, flip it around and just coat the other side. Alright, here we've got the board flipped around, already have photo resist on there, so just going to do exactly the same thing. And here we go, coated circuit board. Next step is to hang this up to dry. And what I usually use is just some alligator clips on both the edges. And then I hang it on sort of a clothesline in the dark cupboard. And it needs to dry for about a day or two. So for the next step in this video, we're going to um, use one of these that I made before. So after we have our coated circuit board, I made these masks and what I do is I export the top and the bottom layer just as an as a PNG file. Uh, I personally use Eagle but you could probably use any other um, 
CAD software to make that sort of thing. I print them with my laser printer on transparency sheet and that's it. And you cut them out and you have these masks here. You can see this is the bottom side because it has the large ground plane on it that um, um, is a yeah it's a negative so everything that is transparent here will be copper while on the bot uh, on the top side you have um, much more that's going to be etched away these are masks for a project that I might feature in the future on the channel um, but we're just going to do a demo here of the double side circuit board process for now so we take the coated circuit board and now what we have to do is carefully align these masks and to do this what I do is I just take a needle and punch through a couple of these um, pins and then do the same thing on the other side and then I drill through the board with a PCB drill and then um, I'll align them carefully, tape them down with Kapton tape, and then we have the mask sandwich that we need for UV exposure. So I'll just do that off camera and show you the result. All right, here's the mask board sandwich. You can see where I drilled through to align both sides. And same on the top layer. I used a mixture of Kapton and thin double-sided sticky tape to get it all to lie reasonably flat. If this lifts up for some reason, um, that's going to affect quality of the board you're making very fast. So now it's time to expose this. So I placed the assembly in the UV radiator and I'm going to give it five minutes either side. So the lamps are on and I'm now just going to pause the video for five minutes, then flip the board around, irradiate for another five minutes and then um, continue the video. All right, so here we are with the board pre-etching. What I did after the exposure is I took it out, put it in some sodium carbonate solution and then just took a sponge like this and just wiped it down. And that gets most of the photoresist off. As you can see, some of the bits here I had to fix. There was some issue with this. Um, because 5 minutes is a little too long. And also this had some inconsistencies in it. Because this was a very early run of the spin coating process. So the thickness varied quite a lot around here. Uh, because I didn't spin all the photoresist off the middle, basically. Um... So I had to fix a couple things, overexposed it a little. Next time I'm going to run it for four minutes instead of five. Um, but there's nothing on there now that should pose a major problem um, during etching or testing. And this is a prototype anyway. So um, there's a fair chance that um, a lot of things on here are not going to work anyway. Um, and I'll definitely have to redo this board. So next thing to do is to put this into the etching machine and to um, get the final board then and then it, I will drill it out put all the components on and then we'll see. Here's the circuit board etching machine that I built in a previous video and all that's left to do is to take this out load up the board put some ferric chloride in there let this run and shake it around for about 15 minutes and then we'll see, we'll see the result. Alright so here we are got the whole circuit board etched and you can see this went fairly well there was a little bit of problem with definition here but the rest is pretty much all right so what we need to do before we can solder this up is we need to strip off all this uh, photoresist and this we're going to do with sodium hydroxide solution so i'm just going to put this in some sodium hydroxide solution and it'll just all peel off this is the circuit board in a 1.5% solution of sodium hydroxide and it's sat in there for about a quarter of an hour I'd say. And you can see, shake this around, it's peeling off. 
all the first resist is just peeling off. And it reveals the edge circuit board underneath, which looks actually fairly nice. So if I flip this around, have a look at the top. And same on the top, it's almost all already stripped off. And what you do with this is um, just strain off the bits of photo resist now. And then you take a sponge and just rub off the rest of the photo resist. And then you just have to drill it and there you've got your board. And this is the point where we're going to stop this video. So this has been a tour through the whole process that I use now to make double-sided circuit boards. And next thing we're going to make with this process is probably going to be one of the Z80 computer cards. Really looking forward to that. It has been a long, long while in figuring out how to do this properly. And as you uh, noticed in the video, there's still a couple of things that uh, I can do better with this process that I have to get some experience with. But... Uh, at least we get some double-sided circuit boards now. So, yeah, next um, video, or at least next circuit board, probably Z80 computer-related.